The National Use of Force Framework is an officer-centric model in which the officer's response is predicated by assessing, planning, and acting based on what the officer is perceiving. They may enter that situation at any realm within that model. The five subject behavior categories move from cooperative to passive resistant, active resistant, assaultive, then grievous bodily harm. As soon as you walk in, you do what you see. And red, red, red ends the scenario. Okay, okay. Under okay, there. okay you're the police. Please come in. Hi, please. Okay. Please, no, just don't, don't take it from me, okay? No, I just need okay. to put it down. No, 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 I can't put it down. Based on the officer's perception of the situation and the subject's behavior, he or she has five options for use of force. Presence, communication, empty hand tactics, intermediate weapons, and finally, lethal force. I think most uh, people have no idea how difficult it is to control a, a person that doesn't want to be controlled. And, I, and I'm talking about somebody who's simply resisting your efforts at control, not actually fighting with you. When it comes to use of force, something as uh, easy as a twisting wrist lock, an Akita move that was modified for uh, use by the police, being taught to Vancouver police officers as well as the police academy. When it comes to the National Use of Force Framework, this will be a soft physical control technique. Here. Okay, hey, partner, come here. Don't move. Working in the Vancouver Police Jail, I can see how difficult that is uh, maintain control and handling the people is resistant and cooperate and uh, not comply, not to mention a person they under influence of drug or alcohol and also had uh, mental health issues. Well, what we realize uh, through training and experience is that an officer who has uh, confidence and has had success using their physical skills to control somebody is likely to default to that in the first instance. An officer who lacks confidence in their physical skills or was unsuccessful operationally in using physical skills is likely to choose a tool to control the same type of behavior. Despite the best efforts of police officers of presence and communication, some people still choose to resist. They still choose to fight. <laughs> And if police do use force um, in dealing with resistive or violent people, sometimes people get hurt. It's not well understood by the judiciary as well. Um, as an example, I was in a coroner's inquest recently of an officer-involved shooting of an individual who had mental health issues, who picked up a knife and, and came at the police officers. And in the coroner's inquest, the judge asked me the question, said, how come they couldn't shoot the knife out of his hand? And, and that might seem, well, to police officers, that's just an absolutely bizarre question. But I actually love those questions because what it, what it reflects to me is the reality is the public, uh, they don't understand interpersonal violence and they need to be educated ab about it. Most people have no appreciation for how difficult it is to try to control somebody that doesn't want to be controlled. Uh, they're only, uh, previous experience with that might be trying to put a child to bed that doesn't want to go to bed. Uh, when you're trying to control somebody who's willing to ignore the pain, who's not feeling pain today, uh, that's an incredibly difficult person to deal with. Uh, you'll see people in restraints that are engaging in behaviors that are incredibly dangerous to themselves. Uh, for example, you see incidents where people are in handcuffs and they start twisting the wrists around where that kind of discomfort would stop you or I instantly. It hurts and they'll keep going to the point where they actually injure themselves. And then of course the headline you'll see the next day is police officer breaks wrist of 90 pound woman. And of course the reality is that there's little the police could do to stop that from taking place. There's no context to it, there's no paint on the canvas. It was interesting to be on that side of things, to be uh, in those various scenarios and be the person who's, in, who's supposed to be in control, rather than from a media standpoint, being you know, behind the line and watching everything play out. It was a different, a completely different feeling. Some folks don't want to be arrested and they'll resist. They'll resist passively. 
Uh, they'll resist actively and some people will become assaultive and in fact quite violent. And in any of those cases, whether it's resistance or active violence, uh, they place responding officers at risk, they place the public at risk, and indeed they place themselves at risk because the, there is no safe way to arrest somebody.